Hello guys and welcome back. For today's video, I'm going to be teaching you the basics of C++ in 10 minutes. So without further ado, let's get started. C++ is a statically typed language, which means when writing up your code, you have to declare the return type and of your functions and the variable type uh, of your variables. So as you can see here, we have a, a function called main and it has a return type of int and return zero. Uh, this is just a standard thing. Uh, main is always your main function is always returning an int um and it it doesn't have to return zero but uh for the, just for this case it return it does return zero so one common type that's used is obviously the first one that we just went over is int and is not essentially int is just short for integer and it allows you to return or store um integer values so I'm going to set this value to 2. Another type is float and a float is essentially a allows you to store decimals up to 32-bit precision and let's see num 2.33 we also have double which is similar to float in that you can store decimals however um, it is more precise than float and and it has up to 64-bit precision Uh, I'm just going to put a longer one just to show that it has higher precision. Uh, another common type that's used is bool and bool value. Essentially, bools allow you to declare uh, or store or return true or false values. And then we also have char, which allows you to store characters. Now these types that I just listed out are primitive types, and what primitive types are is are that they built they're built into the language, and they are they can be used without you know having any extra code in order to use them. So some common so you might be wondering oh so if we have primitive types then we should also have non-primitive types right so yeah so some common non-primitive types that we're using are that people use are vectors and strings and as you can. If you've done any coding before, strings essentially just allow you to uh, store, you know, sentences, words, etc. That type of stuff. Um, however, it won't let you store. Um, it can let you store a character. It can let you store a character, but um, I'll go more into that later. Um, we also have vectors, and vectors are like arrays. Um, depending on what you think of an array, um, if you're thinking of the C++ term of an array then a vector is kind of a dynamic array. Um, if you're coming from Python, yeah, you could just think of it as an array. Or if you're just new to coding in general, just think of it as as a list, essentially. Um, now, the reason why I commented this out and I didn't make a variable straight away like I did with these types is that um, when, you're, when you're using uh, vectors and strings in C++, since they're non-primitive types, you have to declare them. You have to include their libraries in your code and the way you would do that is by going to the top of your code and including including it so include vector and include string so now we should be able to use it uh but however one more thing before we move on there's one other statement that you should use is using namespace std uh you should virtually use it in almost every one of your um c plus plus uh c plus plus um files unless you're making obviously um header header or header files for classes and such but that's another that's for another video and using just to put it simple using namespace std essentially just makes our life easier so when we're writing non-primitive types we won't have to write std colon colon after um before every um vector or string so here we have let's see string letter String word, actually, string word, A, B, C. Uh, strings are identified by, you know, double quotation marks, while characters are identified by single quotation marks. And then we also have vector, vector. Uh, one, one special thing about vectors are that when you make a vector, you have to identify the, the type it's going to hold. What type is it going to hold? So... And you have to notify that by, you know, the 
the less than, uh, the greater than and less than signs, um, as, as shown right here, and then you have to put it in between. So I'm going to be making a vector that will be holding ints, and I'll be calling it nums. There's several ways to declare vectors. This is one way, and in this state, it means that the vector is empty, there's nothing inside, uh, which means it has a size of zero. Uh, we also we can also do it in this way vector nums two and we can we can essentially give the vector a a predefined elements uh so we're gonna give it one two three four and I'm sorry because this variable name was already used that's why I had a red line under it but one two three four and th this obviously just gives the vector a um a predefined size we can also do it in this way vector int nums nums three and using parentheses you the the first art using the parentheses the first argument it would take is the first argument it would take is the size of the the size of the vector so let's just say i want to make the vector size four and then the other um essentially the other uh argument it would take in is what a variable or what I mean what value you want to place in every one of those indexes so some common uh, some common um, functions or I mean or common methods that people use with vectors is um, nums3 dot size and this allows you to get this allows you to get the the size of a vector another one is dot push back and this allows you to you know, push any element, you know, remembering that it ha the element has to be the same type as the, um, as the vector's uh, predefined uh, type. So since nums3 is an int, um, is a vector that holds ints, I have to put, I can only push back ints, so I'm just going to push back 10, I'm just going to push back 11. Um, another one is nums3.clear, and essentially, as the name says, this just clears all the elements and makes the vector size 0. Now, let's go into printing. So, <clears throat> uh, when you're printing, or printing and taking input, when you're printing, you have to, or taking input from the console, you have to include the library, include IO stream, and what IO stream is, is in the input and output stream. And the way you, if you wanted to print something, let's just say you would do C out, and the way I would, I was taught this, um, C out, and then two arrows, uh, pointing towards the C out. And whatever you want to print out. Let's just say I want to print out hello world. And all and then you can end it off. You can either end it like this or you can do it this way. And what end all means E N D L means end lined. Uh we also have C in uh and C in essentially it just means console input and you would point the arrows away from it and let's just say uh, I want to put something into the variable word it will take whatever I type into the console and put it into word and the way out so I know this might seem tricky because we have you know arrows and we don't know which way to put them in um, one way I was taught that is remember which way the information is going so I'm going to be putting outputting information into the console which is why I'm I'm pointing towards the C out and in console and C in I'm taking inputs so I'm taking the data is going from here into my word so that's how I remember where the arrows will be pointing towards so now uh, let's talk about post increment and post uh, pre, um, post increment pre um, pre increment and post decrement and uh, pre decrement operators um, so let's just say the variable nums that we had before we want to add to it num plus plus this just adds this just does num equal to num plus one it takes num and adds one to it and it puts it back into the variable now the reason why it's called the post increment operator is because it adds and also as um the reason why it's called post is because it only a 
it returns or it adds the value after all your code has been run. And then there's also the pre-increment, which is plus plus. Um, and it, this just does, this is, it says it does the same thing, num plus one. And this is the pre-increment operator. Now this at first adds your, um, adds the one and then runs all your code, which is why it's called pre-increment. And the way, an easy way you can identify which one is a pre-increment or a post-increment is by looking at where the plus plus sign is. And as you can see, the plus plus sign is in front of the variable, which is why it's post. And for num, it's behind the, it's before the variable, which is why it's pre. Uh, we also have obviously, um, pre, um, pre-decrement and post decrement and as you can imagine it does the same thing except it subtracts one additionally we also have compound assignment operators such as num plus equals to one and num plus equals to just essentially does uh it adds whatever variable what it, so let's just say we have a value defined here it adds whatever value you put here and it puts it adds it to num and then it stores it back into num. So it essentially does this num is equal to num plus two. Um, we obviously also have the minus equal to operator, the uh, my times equal to and the divide equal to. And they all do the same thing except, you know, if it was two, it would be it would minus it would minus two and put it into num and it would, same thing with times two and then divide two. Um, and then we also we should also know the what structs are now structs if you've done any sort of um any sort of uh coding with uh object oriented coding um you might see that this might this looks very similar to a uh you know, object-oriented programming, but it's not, um, it's not a class or anything, uh, it's, it, it's very similar, but it, it's not, because in classes, you can obviously hide, you can hide your, uh, data members or, um, show them, you can, you just control, you can control that, but here you can't, so let's just say I have a struct, and I name it cat, so I, I can define what variables go into this. So int, let's just say a cat's age, age, and then a cat's name, string name. So the way I would use this is by going down. So I would call, I would basically explicitly call the, the struct and then give it the variable give it the variable name that i want to put into so cat whiskers i don't know <laughs> whiskers and whiskers uh so usually if 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 anyone's who's done um object oriented programming you would have uh if you if you had a you would have a constructor in there and in that constructor um using that constructor <laughs> you would invoke it and you would you know pass in variables but that's not how structs work structs you would you make the you make the variable. So here we have made we have made a object. I mean, not an object, a struct that is called whiskers. And then the way we would define what um the this age and this name is by simply doing whiskers dot name, and then we set it to uh, fluffy. Let's just say we name it. We have its name fluffy. And we also have, let's just say whiskers, if you want to set the A's, whiskers age, and we set it to 10. So now let's print this out, whiskers dot age, end line, and see out whiskers dot name. And if you want... Uh, if you want to add more things to your uh, to your um, printing statements, you just add more arrows. You do d double arrow, and then you would say, uh, let's just say I want to print out like, oh, I want to identify that this is the whiskers age. So this is whiskers age. Whiskers age. 
And then this is Whisker's name. Whisker's name. So now let's run this and here you should see Whisker's name and Whisker's age. Uh, sorry about that. We I forgot about the this input statement. Fluffy and now fluffy and its age is ten. Now let's just say we want to instead we want to use the C input and name it using that using the console input. So C in uh, whiskers dot name whiskers dot age uh, whiskers dot age. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, you see <laughs> the arrow, you can get mixed up with the arrows sometimes, even if you're experienced like me. Um, so yeah, whiskers.age, and let's, let me just copy and paste this again. My bad, control V. And now let's run it. So let's just say I, uh, Garfield, and 10 and as you can see uh, it will immediately put that into the whiskers name and age so that is I have went a little overboard um, but that is about all the time we have today guys um, so if you did like the video please hit the like button subscribe and share as it does help the channel and if you want me to make a full series uh, for C++, uh, please let me know in the comments or like this video up as so we can know to make a series on it. Um, and as always, goodbye.